my name is Cheryl R. Riley. I'm an artist, art advisor, and designer. My name is Ciara Abed. I go to our Student League of New York, and I'm a student here, and I'm a teacher's assistant as well. Hi, I'm Zoila Mata. I actually work in the school, um, and I'm a sequential artist. Hello, my name is Sakona. I'm a TA and a student here. I actually started taking classes here about a year ago. Hi, my name is Clayton Brooks. I'm a figurative artist and illustrator, and I am a student of the Art Students League. Let's start uh, with you, Clayton, since you're closest to me. Uh, can you share uh, what works in this exhibit uh, caught your eye and had the most impact on you or maybe surprised you the most? or that you've come back to and thought about in relationship to your own art? Well, there's definitely some art in here that um, has caught my eye, and I've, I've seen it before, the Charles Allison piece, and that um, I really enjoy because it's, it has like a lot of like visceral activity going on. It, it like elicits a response. Um, and there's some aspects of it that almost create a f create forms, recognizable forms, recognizable figures, but then like once you look even for more than a second, it dissipates and there's not too much things that you can mentally grasp like and recognize, but then it pushes and pulls. And that is, uh, especially with the colors, um, is a, quite an experience. Um, that's very interesting. Uh, Sakona, why don't you answer that question too? What, what, what really affected you when you walked into the gallery and, and what work stayed with you in your mind? I definitely appreciate um, Nanette's Carter piece um, and specifically her use of abstraction, um, forms, lines, um, and, and colors to capture something as complex as um, living in modern time, um, I think by there th there's a lot of way that we can interpret that right and like just a burden of juggling different responsibility can look at uh, can look like for a person but for me when you stand in front of that piece irrespective of what life looks like for you you know that she ca she did a very good job capturing like that feeling tone of balancing um your life um on your back right the heaviness of that and how everything at times hang at a precarious spot where one slip and it can kind of all tumble down. So that power of using simplicity to talk about something nuanced and complex um, really struck me. Um, and I think the next piece, which I cannot see right now, but it is the Deborah Priestley piece um, with the image of families in mason jars. Um, and again, that's a very difficult narrative um, and it's so simple. Um, and it allows you to think about what does lineage um, and history, right? And specifically how we talk about history and how we preserve history through time um, looks like. Um, and without the artist herself telling you her opinion or her feeling, she just create a space for you to step up and interject your own narrative and your own, own idea into that piece. And I think that's really powerful because it goes from a visual experience to actually engaging you in a dialogue with a piece. Very good interpretation. And I, I love the two pieces you picked. Zoila, uh, tell me what is the importance, do you think, of community in an artist's life and career? Or is it important? Getting influenced by other artists is so important, but also having other artists in a community, like in a setting, not just like, oh, this person's work has been so great and really influenced my work, but, but having a group of people that you can constantly communicate with, like blood and flesh, even over Zoom, it's still, it's still valid, you know, you're still sharing ideas and um, you're lifting yourself up all the time and you're also progressing. Like there's some things where, or some days where I just, I need to, to say like, hey, comic friend, let's, let's talk over the phone, you know, and, swap ideas or like even just telling them what I'm doing kind of brings more inspiration to my work. So it's, I think it's very important. Yeah, community is so important. 
Um, Ciara, uh, you answer that same question. It, is the community important to you as an artist or, or do you prefer a, a solitary career? Or do you think, uh, or time, and do you think that, uh, that artists have an influence on each other as far as developing their work? Coming over here, it's just amazing. You bounce off ideas. It's crazy how, like, in a studio, like, if one person is painting a certain color, somehow it's like the artwork is bouncing back. It's like all the artist works is talking to each other somehow. And it's super cool. And it's really important to be part of the community. That's how you learn. That's how you grow and get ideas and help one another and get influenced as well. I have a feeling that in your future, for all of you, you might end up curating the show yourself. So I, I was curious, uh, do you think placement of the artwork and the conversations that uh, can happen because of how a work is installed is important or can affect the viewer's uh, experience of the show? And if so, how, how do you feel that's the case? Why don't you start, Clayton? Um, that's a great question. I think definitely, I think like with most things in, um, in life, uh, it's context, everything is contextual. Um, I think one of the biggest um, effects that shift the context of a piece is often the frame um, and, and the placement of it just being next to something else. Um, because I think naturally when we walk through a space, not only are we coming through with the context of our experiences, we're gonna, we're gonna connect everything in that space, almost make a narrative out of it um, and, and juxtapose things next to each other. Just like how we know, like in terms of color theory, that blue is going to look different between green, between certain, and other colors are going to look different adjacent to other colors. I think it's the same thing with visual um, images um, that can be super complex. And um, I'm not too sure how curators do it, but um, I, I think it is very, it is very important. I, I would think that they probably had a plan in, in place at first but ended up having to move things around once they actually put it up. You yeah. know, I think that the, the, the pieces probably have a lot to say with that. Yeah. You know? um, so um, who is your favorite and least favorite artist in this uh, exhibit, Zoila? So I can definitely answer the, my favorite pieces. Um, it's gonna be the Elk Lake by Morgan and the uh, mother waiting for his return. They're both in that corner over there. And I think they're just fabulous. Um, the, the landscape by Morgan is so majestic, so masterfully done. You're, you're transported there. There's like a single figure. You don't really find the figure at all till much later. And it's just, it, it's an engraving. It's just, that's, that takes a lot of skill. And it's, it's gorgeous, you know? Um, and then the, mother awaiting his return. The angles, the composition of that piece, the emotion, it's so like, it's so moving, you know? It's a, that harsh feeling of like awaiting, like why, why is she waiting? Is she nervous? What's happening? And you know, you get an idea, but it's, it's terrifying. It's like you, she's waiting and terrified, but the eyes are so like sad, you know? It, and it's, it's a lot of emotion there and it's just, Again, another beautiful piece. What about you, Ciara? Is there something that really caught your eye and, and uh, you really felt a relationship with? That blue one, I can't remember the artist's name, but like that grabbed my attention as soon as I walked in there. Yes, walked in here. That's yes. Norman Lewis. Yes, because it was one point in my life, like I was going through like a lot. My grandma was in and out of the hospital and I was painting something like that, but I could not finish the painting. So like that, I gravitated towards that. but. Everything over here is like beautiful, like you could relate to it. Was there art in your family's home? And what did you like or dislike about art and, and why? Or what was the, uh, the story that you had been told about art that has changed as you matured? Zoella, you want to start? Sure, yeah. So growing up, we had this, uh, this giant piece, and I forgot the name of the artist. Lee, I think, and it's it's actually um, someone gave it to my mother. It's this 1980s mass-produced commercial 
art. And it's, I, I thought the artist growing up, I thought this artist is amazing. This is like the, the most amazing painting I've ever seen. And it turns out it was just done in like a kind of factory for artists, like a, just a bunch of people painted it and someone signed their name and it was sold like for, for commercial buildings. It's like, oh, it's, so it's, it's decor. <laughs> and um, I had no idea, but I always grew up thinking that it's, or being told that it's very prestigious, like, oh, the artists. So um, I don't know if that's really changed. Like I go to the museums now and it's just like, oh, the artists. So I don't know, it's, it's humbling and it's really great to think maybe someday. You know? <laughs> Did you grow up with any art in your home, uh, Sigma? Um, I grew up with uh, a significant amount of music um, and theater and um, just storytelling in my in my household because that's embedded in my culture. I'm from West Africa, um, Mali specifically, so we have a strong oral tradition. But when it comes to visual art, that was something that lacked um, tremendously in our house. I mean, we had photos of families and Perhaps <laughs> the only painting that we had was maybe the one of Mary <laughs> in the corner, but there, there was a lack of it. And I didn't think about visual art or engage with visual art till at a very late age. Um, actually, when I was 18, um, I ended up taking a still life elective at a community college. It was very, very random. Um, and after the first two weeks of getting acclimated to like drawing, um, it was all of a sudden like, oh, I can draw. Um, and oh, this feels, this is what being in the flow kind of feels like, right? Like in working with my hand, um, that was at time exhilarating um, and also meditative. So it, it brought a crisis in my life, I will say, because I'm like, oh, I could do this for my life. Because you want to do something that you're passionate about, that you feel good, this feel good. Um, but for my family, because we did not have art around us, specifically, again, visual arts, like they didn't see that as a viable path. And I think, um, in all honesty, that impacted uh, my view of art, because then I ended up not doing it um, in, in university or in study, or and not even considering as a hobby, actually. I walked away after that. Um, three months of drawing and finding that I liked it, I was good at it, I walked away for maybe five or six years and didn't look back until um, the pandemic happened and I was looking to embed my life with more meaning. Um, then I found this community, uh, which is the Art Students League, and started to see, oh, this is, there is a way, you know, like to do this um, a, a, as a form of like life dedication, right? And a lot of time I think about what would have looked like if this was present um, to that 18 or 19 year old self that she saw herself doing this at a later point in her life. So long story short, it, there, it, there was a lack of it and that, and that lack, I think, definitely changed my, my own interpretation of like what art is and what it, the place of it um, in, in my own life. Um. CR, when did you know that you were an artist and what was your family's response to your gift? I honestly cannot relate to them. My friends are here. Uh, it's looking dawn upon, like, why don't you become like a doctor or something, get married and stuff like that, because I'm not married. People assume, you know, I'm going to become a mom and have kids, but no, it's been hard. People tell me, oh, you're an artist? How? Like, now I guess I'm breaking barriers, breaking cultures and stuff like that, being a Muslim American. People just assume that you wear a scarf, you do calligraphy. I do not do calligraphy at all. <laughs> I was born and raised here. The only language I could speak is English and maybe Urdu because my parents are Pakistani. So it's been hard. And my parents telling my um, like their friends that, oh, what does your daughter do? Oh, she's an artist. They're like, oh, okay. <laughs> And then sometimes, like, you know, I make the house a mess. I put my paintings all over. They're like, oh, my God, who did that? They're like, oh, my daughter. She's an artist. They're like, oh, wow, she has talent. It's like you got to, like, show people what you're doing. People don't understand. And I've worked with kids, too, and the kids are surprised. How are you like, an artist? How do your parents accept that? You know, it's like breaking this thing, you know, and it's, it's a journey. I'm confused myself. Like, I tell my instructor, I can't do this anymore. It's too much pressure. Like, I'm not really going anywhere. But then when you look back and reflect, you're like, oh, I did a lot. I'm not giving up. I've been in here too far, too long. I'm not leaving. 
So it's like, I'm inspiring people. And my friend's like, girl, you better not quit. I brag about you. If you quit, then <laughs> no, you're a starving artist. And you're like a real life starving artist. Like, you're struggling. You got this, girl. We're here. You only need one support system. That's it. You're good. It's bigger than you then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Clayton, how about you? When did you realize you were an artist? Have you your whole life been an artist? I, I think all children are, but then we go through a period where we make that judgment. So how did you know you were and how did your family or your circle respond to that? Um, so I didn't grow up with visual art um, at all. Uh, we didn't have any photos up. My my parents are just um, very unworldly. They're not interested too much in culture and like music or things like that. They weren't anti it, but they just weren't interested in a lot of those things. Um, so we didn't have any visual art up. We didn't even have any photos of family up. Um, so for me, my introduction to art and things that were art was animation, cartoons, watching television. And um, I would doodle. I didn't really consider myself an artist. I was much more of a dreamer, just coming up with little funny ideas for superheroes and things of the, of the like. And um, then actually I remember my experience um, in college where I decided to just go draw for in a drawing marathon, but they had overnight at LaGuardia Community College. And someone from the league was actually there drawing and I was mesmerized by, well, two people from the league. Um, I was mesmerized by both of their work. And they were the, the best drafts people there. And I walked up to them and I asked them, how are you doing this? Like, this is amazing. And then and there, I wanted to be like them. Like, they, they told me very seriously how that changed how I view art. Because they told me that, um, that you have to draw every day. Um, they told me that you know this is this is a practice that is almost religious, and they took it very seriously. And the way they spoke about it was very different from the way everybody else was kind of approaching it. And also, their so their success that was showing in their work and their approach. They said you know get out of here, go to the league, um, and that's and now I'm here, and I've been here since they told me about that. Um, so. Yeah, and, and, and it, it, being at the league has changed my view of art a lot. Um, and also quarantine has changed my view of art because for me here, when I got here, um, it became about the technical practice over and over, repetitive, and be here as often as possible and make sure you become a good craftsperson um, before you try to, I pushed away the ideas and decided like, Art is for somebody who has craft. Mm -hmm. And so I be, I'm trying to focus, and still to this day, just trying to focus on craft. So that way, the way I kind of view it is so I can speak. Um, and, but during quarantine, when I no longer had this space that was helping me craft, um, I realized I had to come up and become a craftsperson on my own, and that became very difficult. And so I'm like trying to focus more on ideas and things like that. And so it's shifting the meaning of, of what um, art means to me right now. I think that's a good process though. And that's, I'm really enjoying your answers to this question. So I, I'd like to hear what you have to say about that too, Zoila. When did you know you were an artist and how did you, how did you go on that journey and, and get on that path? Um, so I, I had always wanted to be an artist. One of those, like I was a little kid, I didn't stop drawing. Um, but there was a long period where I was like, well, this, is, this isn't going to make me money. So let me go. I went to academia. I studied plastics. And I did that. And I was at the point where I was going to jump in, like, go get my doctorate in classics. And I was like, do I want to stay doing this or do I want to draw? And I, I did some watercolors for um, my, my Greek professor. And she, she said, don't give this up. Don't, and then with just little watercolor, she's like, don't, don't stop this. And I was like, I'm going to do what you say. I just like totally just went 180 and decided to just go back to, to learning art and pursuing it and just, you know, head on. Um, and I came here after I went to FIT 
to, to, to improve my skills. And I haven't really stopped. I mean, the quarantine has been difficult. It's, it's been hard. But again, because I've had a community that kept me going. Like I had um, an online class that's just been amazing. And then Spring Street Studio, which, yeah, I've been to it. Yeah, it just keeps you going. It, it's so important for like life. Basically. I'm just loving hearing these stories. So tell me, Sakona, how when did you know you were an artist and how have you pursued that? Um, I, I think mine started um, in, during the pandemic. Um, again, you know, I think though things have been hard the last year, it did give us a lot of space to think about what we care about and who we are. Um, and I found that um, those things that I define myself by, whether, you know, it be uh, my job or my activism weren't enough anymore. Um, and I wanted to go back to things that gave me pleasure and like gave me meaning, um, but also were a tool to, to work through some of my own feelings and understand myself. And um, beyond writing, the, the thing that made that easy was art, um, specifically um, going from uh, my um, beginners um, painting, figurative painting class to taking something like mixed media where really <laughs> I feel like you're just being dropped in an ocean into like, all right, what is inside of you <laughs> that you can make? And finding that as I was doing that, um, there was a language there that I already had. There was a story there that was already my own that um, I could tell. So from that point, I think that's when I started to wear that hat of I'm an artist. Some days I still struggle to claim it, uh, but nowadays it's a little bit easier to say, you know, yes, I am. And it's also because I get to be in fellowship with people, you know, like the ones on this panels and people in my class who are coming from all different walks of life, right? And do all different types of things outside and they say they're an artist. So it, it my narrow definition of what it meant to be an artist and who could call themselves that was really brought in and redefined to just be the average person, right? As long as you have that interest, that passion, and you, you have um, a desire to express um, something, then that inherently make that title yours. <laughs> um, so that understanding made me feel like I can claim this. And the more I claim it, the easier it is to just pick up a brush or just pick up a piece of paper and start doing something. It totally is a muscle. The yeah. more you do it, the, the better you are. And um, I spent some time looking at uh, each of your uh, work as well. And Ciara, I wanted to ask you, uh, what emotions are you evoking with your vibrantly colored landscapes? And are they true representations of what you see or are they what you imagine? I get inspired by looking at other people's works or an image from the internet, and then I just make it my own. And then as I'm doing it, I'm not really thinking about what I'm looking at. I'm just trying to get the perfect colors and whatever I'm feeling, so my emotion goes right into the painting. So one day I'll be happy, happiness, you know, or sad, you will see all the dark colors. Some days you're just frustrated and just, you have to start over the next day. You have to take a pause. So it's like your emotions coming out into the painting. So, and they are very emotional. That, that's why I was interested in knowing that. Zola, I wanted to know, it seems that you're writing stories. You're, you're making stories with your paintings or your work. Uh, and what medium are you using to create that story? So do you have to move fast with that? Or is the, are these paintings that can happen over the series of days? Uh, during this pandemic, it's been, it's been really rough. Actually, there was a point where well, several points where it's like, maybe this is, maybe I've got to do something else. Maybe I've got to stop. But where I am now, I feel like it, like some of the parts where I stopped or just didn't really do as much as I wanted to. So maybe it was just a pause. Maybe like you said earlier, maybe that was just, this is a long pause that I kind of needed. Um, I feel like strangely invigorated right now, like um, in terms of I want to, to learn a little bit more, learn differently. Um, as for the, my paintings, like I, I like to sketch from life a lot. I use watercolor and I try to go as fast as I can um, just to get it down. And it's, it's kind of like a study more um, than I can say this is my art, but it is my art. This is what I do. <laughs> um, but as for my sequential work, that takes a long time. Like I, 
I really like to, to plan out the, the weight of the lines. The ink has to be very precise. It's, you know, if you mess up, you can fix it, but it's, it's better to just get it right the first time. But the, um, the preparation is what takes a long time. It's working out the story and working out the composition. And with sequential art, it's um, nothing really exists by itself. It's all relying on the thing next to it. You know, so it just it takes a long time. And hopefully, at the end, you have a story that reads well, that moves at the pace you want it to. Um, and that's, I hope, drawn well. You know, that's, that's important for me. Uh, Clayton, uh, why do you think many of the most noted uh, contemporary artists uh, of the Black African diaspora are primarily creating figurative work and uh, focused on the Black body? And uh, I also wanted to know, what does outside utility mean? Something that you wrote in uh, your uh, statement that I read. I think... Of course, there's still a lot of um, you know, issues with representation. And I speak, think specifically today, um, it's not about the quantitative amount of representation, it's about the quality of representation. So I think um, collectively, black people are realizing like we don't want just representation from anybody, we want representation from ourselves. Um, so we want black people to create black bodies and produce those things. Um, I also think just in general, um, a lot of figurative work or representational work in general um, tends to be more popular than abstract work. Um, outside of, you know, abstract work seems to make a presence more in terms of design and things outside of the fine art. Not that they, their presence isn't known. I, I don't think it becomes as popular um, to people who may not consume fine art. Um, and Outside utility. When I when I wrote that, I was um, that's a part of my shift in perception about art and and um, making two dimensional images. Um, just a lot of personal things were going on um, and still are going on in my life. Um, and uh, my beliefs and values and like where I want to like shift my activism. Um, is very, at this time, very focused on like the environment and such, and things that have um, direct or unambiguous uh, utility. Uh, and so I guess, you know, art has, you know, uh, has a, a wide variety of uses because of its, and you can, it can be interpreted and it can be used for many different things. Um, and I think it has also been, you know, considered um, something that maybe more utilitarian to like the person who's creating, like the process. Um, so I guess when I say creating things outside of utilities, creating things that don't have an immediate and direct use, um, which is I guess it's a very hard thing to say like as an, as an artist, or it can be I guess offensive to say like these things don't have any immediate use. Um, but um, that is something that I'm struggling with at this time, especially considering about how I feel about like the production of just human made things in general. I wanted to ask you Zuala, um, how has the isolation and removal from the class environment and the structure affected your practice? And uh, so that, that, that's what I'd like to know. All right, so um, for me, that was like a big, a big like wrench in, in the plans like um i was coming here so frequently and so often and it was like okay i have class in the morning and then um i don't even remember my schedule but i was here like i was living here basically <laughs> um and when i had in be time between classes i was working in the cafeteria like just on my own art um and it was great you know i had you know friends i could talk to show my stuff to or share ideas with um, and then I, like, as soon as the pandemic hit, I kept trying to, to stay with that, stay with that flow, even through Zoom. But it became difficult. I lost a lot of my community. Um, my, like, physical workspace changed. Um, my studio, like, went right down to size. Like, it, it's, my, it's me and a desk now. So that's, that's fine. That's good. 
I think that the space wasn't that terrible of a problem. It was the what happened during the pandemic, um, what happened with the Black Lives Matter movement, seeing atrocity after atrocity, seeing like politics. It was just like, this is not, my art didn't feel as important. It felt like I should be speaking more to that. But in the end, I don't think my art really, it's it's like I, I focus on comic, comic work, on fantasy work that will be influenced by the world, but I'm not really a political artist. That's just, that's as much as I wanted to be or thought about it, it's it's not who I am. It wasn't true to what I have been. So I just couldn't shift gears like that. And so for a long time, I just wasn't really doing art for months. Um, but yeah, the production just kind of came to a halt for a bit. So doing like going back to, to doing plain air. I did a couple of plain air um, and going to a studio like Minerva's Spring Street Studio was really great. It just kept me afloat in art. Um, but yeah, it really drastically changed a lot. Yeah. How about you, Ciara? Has this had a change, uh, affected a change in the way you make art or what your art looks like or how you're approaching being an artist? Uh, yeah, there was changes. I started experimenting with watercolors because like when the lockdown happened, all of my art supplies were at the league in the um, lockers. And I was like, oh, you know, the league will open up in two weeks, three weeks. And then it just kept on going, rolling down. I was like, wow. So I was like, oh, let me just experiment with watercolors because that's like a different language for me because I work with acrylics. So I've just been experimenting and then things just happening, like politics, and you're just becoming numb, and you just don't feel like doing anything as much, and then it's house, family stuff. So it's like I'm pushing myself to like paint. But now I finally picked up my art supplies, the acrylics and stuff. I'm like, hmm, should I go back to acrylics, or should I stick to watercolors? So it's, it's changed a lot. I, I find as an artist, it, everything that happens is good. Like even horrible things because it all affects my art and it makes me look at things in a different way or approach it or as you did change mediums uh, because of the expediency of it you know so um, that's the beautiful thing I think about being a creative person is if you're a creative person you create out of whatever is available to you at the time has it changed you and your work uh being isolated, being away from the class and your colleagues and uh, away from the studio space? Mm -hmm. um, well, my experience was uh, 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 different because, again, I started making art maybe two months before the leaks closed. Um, and then we moved to um, online Zoom class. And honestly, I was grateful to have that space, um, again, that quiet time to be able to dedicate more hours to just creating and not only um and not be pressured by the idea of time right because now it seems like we were thinking we were taking things day by day um so that meant that i could engage with my piece especially again the mixed media piece a little bit more significantly and kind of have a dialogue with myself um and continuously refine or take out things till finally what I was trying to get out um, came out in front of me uh, and was represented on, on, on the canvas of the piece of paper that I was working on. Um, but with that being said, um, I did miss um, being in class with fellow students, um, especially again in the beginner's classes is so different because everyone is new. <laughs> you're all nervous, you're all like, I don't know what I'm doing. And it's like, oh, you don't know what you're doing either. Um, and sometimes there are moments of levity in the class where you can step back and like laugh at each other's work. Um, and then later, you know, after two months, like being able to see, oh, you're making progress and I'm making progress too. So that idea of fellowship and like moving through an experience with people who were fumbling just as much as you were, right? And like kind of by showing up, you know, every week and doing it. Um, and that, that encouragement was something that lacked in that isolation. Um, even though we were, you know, still on zoom, it was just, it was, it was different. And I think I had to 
find that motivation on my own to say, okay, I'm at home, but I'm making art and I'm not going to let um, distraction that are inherent in my space um, to come in and like take these hours away from me. Um, even if there is no other individual around me, like having that experience with me. Um, That's really good. So you learn the importance of once you're out of school and you're an artist, to motivate yourself yes. and, <laughs> and, and inspire yourself. Yeah. So that's really good. Yeah. Um, I think this is really a great uh, question and, and a thought. Uh, Zoila made me think about the fact that all of these things now are, are happening around us in the, the, the atmosphere. We have the Black Lives Matters. We have the, we had the election happen. Uh, we, we have the COVID virus. How has that affected or has it affected you as an artist or your work, Ciara? Uh, for me, I did a lot of reflecting and I did educate my parents too with the Black Lives Matter, with like what's going on and like because of the black people, it's easier for us to, you know, get to do things because like they paved, you know, a lot of things for us. And I was just trying to educate them and, and, and it did work. And I used to put, Muslim American Pakistani as an artist, but I changed it to Pakistani because no matter what, people don't think I'm American and like my skin complexion, I'm pa Pakistani. So I ended up putting Pakistani. So like with everything that's going on, I just had to reflect even with the election, no matter what, I tell people I'm American, they're like, how? And I'm like, oh my God, do I have to have a label on my head like I'm American or not? It's so I just, it was just a lot of reflection and I'm just trying to like somehow incorporate it in my art. I'm still finding myself. It's like I still want my ethnicity somehow to be coming out in my artwork, but it's hard because technically there's a terminology coconut, um, brown from outside, but white from inside because I don't really know about my culture since I was born and raised here. So I'm still trying to learn my culture and stuff. So you know, a lot of experimenting and a lot of soul searching and yeah, so it's a lot of reflection as well because the pandemic, you're like focused at home. Of all of the things that are happening while this COVID uh, epidemic is happening, also we have the Black Lives Matters movement. We have a change in administration. That means a change in culture as far as the politics is concerned, as who our president is and um, how has that had an effect on your cartoon type work or the subject matter you choose to uh, explore or even your medias that you're using as it has happened with uh, Ciara and Zoella? I think, um, I think my experience is very, very akin to Zoella. I was um, pretty much living here um, at the league and practicing here all the time. Um, and when I was removed from that space, um, from this space, mm -hmm. um, a lot of things for me fell apart. Um, I didn't, I didn't have um, a personal practice that I I continue to do on my own. Um, and when certain events were starting to occur and the political climate was changing and such, um, rather than it affecting like the content of my art, it affected whether or not I should be doing this. Um, you know, so. I don't, yeah, it hasn't affected so much the content as much. But now I am coming back around because I love drawing, I love um, creating images and um, trying to find a way to, to have those, those two things meet. Um, the, the movements, the, the Black Lives Movement and um, the other things that were going on during during COVID were, in my opinion, like symptoms of things that were already going on. Um, I was not like particularly, I was, I think I wasn't surprised by the events that happened as much as I was surprised by the response. Started concerning myself about what power do I have and how should I be manifesting that to affect my environment and my culture? Um, and, and, and what can I do with, um, once again, like the craft of my, of my art? 
I thought to myself, well, am I, have I honed this craft well enough to speak with it in a, in a, in a way that if I wanted to um, try to translate my views and my experiences um, through the artwork, can I do that? And that's still a question I don't have the answer for. Um, and uh, I think, you know, also still being away from the league makes it difficult for me to continue to, to try to develop my, myself. I kind of, I realize how much, at no, like, detriment to the league, but almost of a, of a crutch this space was, or maybe how much I was leaning on the league to be the, the, the artist that I, I thought I was. And um, yeah, just in a really weird space. <laughs> well, you were gonna have to leave at some point anyway. <laughs> I, that actually, it's funny, that was not my plan. <laughs> I was not planning on leaving. <laughs> well, Sakona, tell me uh, the same thing. Did these things that are happening during this time, I mean, in addition to this pandemic, we've all been able to focus more mm -hmm. on the things that are happening politically. Uh, and specifically being an African-American woman, what about the Black Lives Matters movement? How, how has that affected us? I kind of think about it, my era was the Black Panthers, mm -hmm. and they used art a lot to get their message out to the world mm -hmm. uh, in posters, their, their breakfast program, things like that. And mm -hmm. now those pieces are considered uh, fine art pieces, even mm -hmm. though they were really graphic art at the time. Mm -hmm. So has, has what's happening in the atmosphere and in the politics and in the country and in the world uh, is that affecting you as an artist? And do you think it will have some long or short term? Mm -hmm. um, I think going back to Clayton's point, those things were stuff that always weighed heavily on my mind um, before the pandemic, because you know this is just the experience of being black, but also just being any type of minority um, in a country that is steeped in in, in power dynamics, right? And and who's life is worth more and whose voice is worth more. So you, irrespective of um, where you fall, I don't think like you can be alive and like not feel that pressure um, and those um, dynamics influencing you um, in different spaces of your life. So for me, it was something that I continuously was aware of um, and was grappling with. And, you know, actually my art gave me a tool to do that um, because it was this space where I could be nuanced and not everything had to be perfect. But I think what changed in the pandemic um, was seeing now that we were all home, kind of what you said, the response, right? It's like a lot of people were paying more attention. Um, social media was, was blowing up. Um, and I think there were moments where I retreated more into myself because it meant that as a society, we were at a point where we were still debating human dignity. Um, on a public platform. And that felt really jarring to me, seeing that, well, you know, it was doing this and it should not have done that. And and just those discourse, um, right, that, that we're trying to to really skirt around the issue um, and, and make it more, that, that make it seem to be more about just like, again, basic human dignity and human decency and human rights. I don't think, for me, those subjects are debatable. So seeing that on TV, seeing that on social media, seeing all of those thought pieces, it was a time infuriating. It was a time exhausting because it didn't bring back those bodies that we lost. Um, definitely did not make up for it. Definitely did not make people who look like that feel any better um, seeing that on TV. So my art became a space for me to talk through my emotions with myself, talk through my experience with myself, um, really navigate and interpret what was happening. And in that process, something surprising happened, which is I found that art could also be a medium to have dialogue with someone rather than a conversation or a thought piece because I could make a piece that was very political and put it in front of someone who might disagree with me and say, you look at this and you tell me what they see. And they bring their own stories and they bring sometimes their own biases that they might be aware that they had, right? So it allowed me to be vulnerable with people and to engage 
-hmm. in, you know, again, a dialogue with folks that did not feel like we were fighting or we were against each other as much as I'm just showing you what this looks like for me. What do you see in it? What part of the conversation am I missing that you're going to add? And in some of my classes, that was really helpful because I was making really political work and bringing in, in a diverse um, Zoom uh, full of people from all background and seeing their reaction to my work and what they're adding and what they're excluding also, I think, you know, was kind of how the pandemic, making artwork in a pandemic and bringing like that um, political and social justice, um, or just, I will, I will just say human suffering <laughs> component to it kind of looked like. I really enjoyed talking to you all and, and you really inspired me. Uh, and thank you so much for your really thoughtful and wonderful answers to my questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you.